Welcome uh, to this uh, web, uh, webinar series by Exchange for Media. And uh, in this, uh, in today's uh, webinar, the topic is preparing brands for the uh, COVID downturn. Uh, this is unprecedented time for all of us. The brand marketeers, uh, the brands themselves are facing a very tough time. So uh, I want those, and there are some categories uh, that can uh, may maybe make a lot, make most of this time, but a whole lot of other categories are facing challenge. Uh, if I, st so today uh, with me, let me introduce, I have Mr. Deepak Sinha, uh, VP Marketing, Mira 91. And I have uh, Mira Ayer, CMO Medlife. Hi. And we'll be, we'll be talking about um, what is next for brands, how do brands prepare and deal with this crisis. So I'll start with you, Mira. Uh, tell me, this is unprecedented. At the start of this year, uh, we never thought that we'd be uh, faced with this kind of a situation. Uh, tell me, for marketers and brands, what does this uh, health scare mean? How are you preparing? How are you preparing to tide over this time, this unprecedented period? By the way, unprecedented is one of the largest uh, search results right now on Google. That's why I smiled when you said that. I just got that tidbit from the Google team yesterday. So unprecedented times has pretty much taken over in terms of the favorite word to uh, describe COVID. And yes, it is. Um, I belong to the healthcare uh, industry. And as part of the healthcare industry for us right now, um, there is, uh, there is a massive, in fact, uh, absolutely unplanned search, uh, surge in terms of uh, demand. People want to hoard up, people don't want to miss out on um, any kind of medications, obviously, because it impacts life. But um, what I think is really critical at this time is to be able to actually function normally. And um, that is where customer experience is taking a hit because of uh, all the issues on ground, whether it is, uh, you know, unavailability of personnel or it is about uh, restriction in movement uh, interstate within India because borders are sealed, etc. So I think uh, it, it is it is a time where for brands um, like ours, which is which are fundamentally in healthcare, um, it is witnessing a huge amount of uh, increase in terms of traffic orders, etc. But the downturn is the fact that uh, we aren't able to quite cater to it uh, as effectively and as well as we would like to. It is a time for people to stay home. And uh, e-commerce companies like us help people do that. Every delivery we make prevents one visit outside for the customer. Um, having said that, all the issues that we are facing are uh, making a terrible customer experience out of it uh, with a lot of orders having to be modified, cancelled, delayed, etc. And that's what we are grappling with right now. Deepak, for your category, for example, which depends on a lot of experience and we have brought this social distance. How are marketers in your category dealing with this challenge? Yeah, so first, um, I'll say that's interesting that you put uh, Mira and I together. Uh, farmers industry and, uh, and beer. I think it'll exactly. really make for an somebody, interesting... Uh, somebody had said that. Somebody, somebody, somebody on the lighter note said Dawa and Daru in the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, you know, we rely heavily on uh, experiential and activations and uh, different types of concerts and festivals and so on. It's very much a, a part of the consumer experience uh, for us. And with social distancing, all of that goes up for a toss, right? And we rely on these events for two main reasons. One is to continue to build our community, engage our existing consumers uh, in a very fun and playful way, give them a memorable experience. And uh, also, uh, it gives us a great way of sampling our consumers on our existing products or maybe new products. So uh, what is it that you do when all of that goes up for a toss, right? And even post lockdown, as you mentioned, so social distancing will not necessarily just go away. I think some of it will continue to live on and it will become a part of a new norm for us. Uh, so I think there's a couple of trends that will come out of this uh, is one, you're going to have the consumer that has uh, had a really bad case of cabin fever uh, that is going to go out and continue to socialize and maybe start to travel and maybe be more likely to attend uh, these types of events. But I think what's more likely is that you'll have consumers who will then decide to potentially avoid large gatherings and uh, uh, spend more time with their trusted circle. So spend more time at home. Uh, and um, 
it's important for brands like ours uh, and industry like ours to really get with the new times and adjust to the new norm, uh, which is going to be a combination of um, uh, making sure that we give consumers uh, the experience that they're looking for now at home. Uh, so focusing on the retail shops, focusing on getting our brands more in their living rooms as opposed to in-person events, uh, but then also making sure that you know uh, the experience continues to live on uh, in the digital space through virtual experiences as well. So I think those are the two ways we're going to adjust to this new normal for us. Uh, Mira, if uh, uh, I have to ask you, so most of the brands, they have shifting, shifted into protection mode, uh, survival mode. Uh, while as your brand has this advantage that you can still reach out to customers, you know, there is a, there's a kind of relevance that your brand has. But overall, I'm just talking generally about cross brands. Uh, how important is it to maintain that customer connect during this, these times? And what can be done to maintain that? brand connect to be on top of the customers. You can't directly sell it with them, you can you know, kind of you know, uh, market products with them, but how do you stay in touch with brands, with, with your customers doing these things? Sure, so Rohin, there are two kinds of services, right? Uh, services like ours and groceries, etc., which are essential and are still moving about, and within groceries itself, you have a large gamut of products. So. One of the campaigns, for example, that I totally adore right now is the one that Surf Excel is doing, a brand that I was associated with in, the, in my past uh, while I was at Unilever. Uh, so they are really uh, taking the real insights of you know children having to stay home in this lockdown. And they've said that we dark ghar ke andar, uh, you know, lagenge bachcho ko. So they are still encouraging children and they have modified their site to basically allow digitally uh, help parents to basically engage their children. So I think um, for, for brands and for product and services that are relevant right now and are continuing to basically grow, it is about modifying it to the current consumer insight that you are, uh, you know, you are seeing in terms of customer behavior. But for brands that are uh, really facing a backlash in terms of, let's say, you have a, a whole lot of entertainment, you have hospitality, you have travel, um, you have uh, even segments like Vira uh, and other beverages as industry, these I think uh, you don't want to lose spontaneous uh, recall and you know consideration in your customers ever. So uh, you know it, it is it is true for uh, not just a time like this, but uh, you know if, if it were only about those specific buying occasions for even white goods as an industry where you don't tend to buy every year or every month, it is something which happens um, you know once in several years. They still continue to basically, you know, fight for that money space in your head and fight for, uh, you know, consideration when it comes to purchase. So obviously, Corona is not going to be infinite, uh, right? right? It is, uh, it is not an, an indefinite lockdown. Uh, when things open up again, you pretty much want to be top of mind for a customer when they come back to your category. So it is important for marketeers at this time to work towards that. However, at a time where revenues are dipping. It is important to conserve cash. It is important not to spend uh, in a way that basically jeopardizes your business and business outcomes and PNL. So therefore, uh, brands have to find, uh, you know, find ways to do more with less in terms of monies and uh, revenues. Uh, and uh, that, that is where creativity comes into play. That is where you start leveraging a lot of things that are happening right now, including, uh, you know, digital uh, specifically to build your brand and ensure that when time comes for your revival, you're still there in terms of top of mind and and, and consideration for your customers. Uh, Deepak, how do you, uh, what do you have to say about staying in touch with your customers during these times? Yeah, I think uh, Mira made a lot of great points. Uh, it's about uh, doing what's right for your brand and uh, so staying uh, top of mind in a cost-effective way. I think we all are in different places uh, in terms of um, the uh, capabilities right now uh, in terms of our willingness to spend uh, but also in terms of what are our objectives for our brand so there might be brands that have uh, strong brand equity right now and maybe that's not the the focus they uh, will decide decide to preserve cash and maybe um, save that for a stronger supply chain uh, revival uh, and maybe ones who will decide okay well it makes sense for us to engage with the consumers um, and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, invest more into our brand equity. So for us, you know, I think uh, it's a combination of things. And uh, I think we, we all had a moment of, you know, what do we do? What do we say? How often do we say it? And uh, what we realized was in the end that consumers just want to hear from you uh, as a brand. 
and uh, they want you to uh, talk to them. Uh, I think they would like for the uh, brands to keep a very real conversation. Of course, not take advantage of the uh, situation. And um, you know, it's okay to not know how to start a conversation, but uh, it's also important not to go dark. So for us, we noticed a couple of different things. Uh, we noticed uh, right away there was a spike in our uh, UGC. Uh, consumers were working from home, they were posting pictures with our brands, and we really appreciated the love that we were getting from the, from the consumers. And to show our appreciation, we decided that we would repost a lot of this uh, because we wanted to give the love right back and, and uh, again, share it with our community. So that was the first thing that we started to do. Second was uh, we created a couple of different uh, playlists on Spotify, work from home playlist, a quarantine and chill playlist, uh, and so on. And then we invited uh, our customers or our community to come and collaborate on those playlists with us. And then finally, uh, uh, something else that we actually just launched last week uh, was we did a live session with Thomas Hartman, our brewer. Uh, and this is something that we've been wanting to do for some time. And um, we, you know, now with this sort of increased bandwidth on our social media uh, and a very captive audience, we had an opportunity to do that. So Thomas went live on Instagram. He spoke about our beers. He uh, taught the viewers on how to properly taste a beer, how to pair beers with different foods. And then he opened it up to a very fun Q&A session. Uh, and I was really impressed with uh, uh, the questions that were coming in from the people watching. Uh, they were genuinely excited about our products, but more importantly, I think, is that they were just genuinely excited to talk about beer, uh, and any beer for that matter. So uh, we plan on doing more uh, events like that with Thomas and with other people in the company. And uh, also important to note, this was very cost-effective ways of engaging our consumers. We didn't spend a tremendous amount of money. Uh, and uh, again, I think it's just a matter of keeping the open uh, dialogue. Here. So we are also witnessing a lot of consumption happening in the television, especially the news, and also digital, and also entertainment, online. Yeah. Uh, what can you, uh, what do, how do marketers see this uh, shift? At the moment, that is happening. And my second question, if you it is related to this, that is this behavioral shift, uh, will it be uh, irreversible or will it stay somehow as we move? See, if, if I have to actually wear the soothsayer's hat, uh, my own prediction is that uh, there are some things that are going to change and they are going to change uh, pretty conclusively in the post COVID scenario as well. I think um, movement to digital and digital buying uh, in general are going to witness an increase and keep growing because uh, it, it is safer. Um, let me put it as bluntly as that. But um, in terms of media consumption, Ruhel, uh, media consumption has increased on television. It has increased um, uh, on digital and in both places. You are obviously, you know, lamenting that you know now unfortunately is not the time to burn a lot of marketing dollars when either organically demand is crazily high uh, in businesses like ours, or uh, sadly because of uh, you know not being able to function uh, in Deepak's case, you cannot possibly sell at this time. So uh, bad time to be actually pumping in a lot of marketing dollars behind it. But uh, Deepak is right. Uh, you have uh, fantastic options now uh, with so many people coming online and so many people being engaged and wanting something right. or the other. Uh, and it, this is where if your brand can differentiate and do something, it will not cost you much. And yet you will leave behind a very good impact uh, with, with a lot of your customers, both existing as well as a lot of prospective ones where it is time to get back. Um, so my sense is in terms of consumption, once COVID lockdown is over, um, I think television will go back to what it was. Uh, digital, uh, while in terms of consumption, will uh, again go back to normal levels. The activity on the e-commerce side, uh, my prediction is it will go up. E-health, in fact, is something that will possibly become the norm um, rather than being something which is uh, you know sub five percent kind of share in the overall uh, pharma retail industry today. So that, uh, that that's what I think is going to happen to customer behavior, and the surge that you're seeing is a little more temporary. Um, you know, let's face it: once life is back to normal and people start uh, traveling and commuting again, those minutes that you're seeing in terms of increase will obviously get shaved off and go towards the other activities that people have to get back to. Deepak, your thoughts on this? Do you think? This yeah, I mean, I, I agree uh, a lot with what Mira has said that. We are seeing a surge. I think you know, they, your team has reported a lot of those numbers as well. Web browsing is up. 
uh, social media engagements up, e-commerce, everything is up uh, across the board right now. And uh, uh, you know, brands are deciding to participate in this new uh, virtual experience economy, right? The engagement is up. You have a very captive audience. Uh, and um, uh, you know, I can give you a couple of personal sort of uh, examples. You know, all of the photos that have been sitting in the photo library, now I have an opportunity to post all of the friends that you haven't engaged with in some time, you have an opportunity to engage with as well. Uh, and I think what's really interesting is all the content that's being created right now uh, across the board. So uh, I joke around because my wife and I get called out on these TikTok challenges and we have yet to actually film a TikTok challenge because by the time we get around to filming a TikTok challenge, a new one has replaced the old one. It's already old news. Uh, but you know, when you think about the, um, the uh, engagement and all the content that's being created right now and the time that's being spent on screen, the amount of learnings that we're going to get out of this period are going to be tremendous. And uh, I haven't even mentioned apps like you know, Zoom and uh, uh, House Party, all of these apps. I was reading something, uh, uh, a stat on Zoom that there were 40 million downloads last month, or meaning uh, up until the end of March. So uh, what's also interesting, and those are longer format uh, in terms of engagement, and uh, we're going to learn our consumers a lot better after this period's over, and consumers are gonna learn us a lot more, or, or a lot better as well, uh, post-COVID. Uh, Rohit, if I can add over here, I think um, if, if, if you're a marketer, um, the best thing for you to do right now is really try to find ways in which your brand, uh, and, and be true to your brand first, um, is able to do something meaningful in people's lives during this lockdown. Right. I already gave you the example of Surf Excel doing, uh, you know, a wonderful thing in terms of uh, helping parents manage their children and, ch and their children's time effectively. Similarly, um, you know, if, if, if you were to uh, look at other brands, uh, at, at this moment, uh, they have to really think about saying that Corona, and, and I just saw a comment, uh, Corona is top of mind and people, you know, all content around is about Corona. Yes, it is. But equally, the content that has done brilliantly for us so far uh, in these last 20 days, uh, from an engagement perspective on various social handles that we have as well as uh, in our customer communication has really been about how can people continue to stay fit and uh, you know stay invested in their health um, and a lot of our customers tend to be chronic uh, chronic disease customers like diabetes or heart etc so content that has really uh, revolved around their fitness levels and how do you basically make most out of a lockdown and within home also make fitness count uh, are some of the content that have done brilliantly right so uh, you have to look at how can you make a meaningful difference to your customers lives during this lockdown and it has to be true to your brand so we are about improving health outcomes it fits in seamlessly for us so if you can do something like that and yes indeed for Bira, people are dead bored i can tell you i am bored i i am kind of raring to basically get out Right. Um, so, what can you possibly do to uh, make make my life that much livelier? What can possibly be the fun that you add to me? Or, or you know, if, if that is the space that your brand is in, uh, if, if your brand is in a space that can make a difference, please, uh, you know, by all means, go ahead and customers will actually lap it up because they are right now hungry. They are just, uh, you know, looking to, you know, just just participate and be part of something bigger and larger as compared to what this lockdown has actually put us on. Tell me for a brand like yours, Mira, um, which is online, is pure online brands, how have they uh, dealt with this, uh, this sudden uh, you know, surge in uh, uh, digital transactions or going online? I mean, they were not prepared. Do they, are they, uh, was their capacity building? What are the learnings for online brands here? They are, of course, getting a lot of traction, but what are the learnings for them? Because uh, they never thought that this kind of traction would ever happen on their platforms. You're right. So, Ruhel, uh, business as usual has taken a complete halt. And what we at Medlife are now organized as are uh, seven almost war room formats, each focusing on a different aspect of business. Right? Uh, each one of us from the leadership team is anchoring a particular part of it. So we've, we've we are literally on a war room footing. Right, because uh, every day, even without us spending a single paisa, we are uh, facing double the demand that we were pre-COVID lockdown. And on the ground, we still have only about 60% attendance on the off side. So how do you really make 
uh, things match how do you make a difference how do you ensure that uh, healthcare and health coming home doesn't get uh, hampered at this time is what the business has completely reorganized itself into and one key part of it and this is where i think from an online business perspective more than uh, marketing for the traditional metrics like awareness and consideration etc our focus and my focus particularly because i lead that entire piece is completely towards customer communication right if you have 500000 people coming on to your platform each day and each one buying to basically order and wanting medicines delivered home uh, you can't do that uh, i am in no position to do that and i have to manage at this time uh, with stress levels already being so high the customer sentiment for both those who are coming on to the platform as well as those who are placing an order and uh, for whatever reasons on ground if it is delayed or if it is uh, partially delivered etc right so customer communication therefore has taken up much bigger uh, focus uh, on the e-commerce platforms that are still continuing to operate wherein one we have to be uh, we have to show enough empathy for people who are coming on to the platform and ordering with us second we have to be transparent and we have to be transparent so that we don't over promise and under deliver we are better off doing it the other way and third we have to basically continuously engage with them and at this point in time there is nothing called over communication you communicate communicate and communicate and that's how you will continue to maintain the relationships that you have and even at this time where customer experience is taking a hit unfortunately you will maintain your relationships and manage to hold your customers on So I think for e-commerce companies, that is really the key. Deepak, for brands uh, that uh, used to bet big on offline and experience, what are the learnings for those brands? Yeah, I think it's uh, <clears throat> uh, the learning is uh, a couple of the uh, sort of conclusions I think that we will have is that people, as I mentioned earlier, will adjust to this new normal, uh, especially with social distancing and uh, concern even when businesses uh, resume here of uh, being around large uh, groups of audiences and so on uh, or large groups of people so um, I think you know yes we do rely uh, heavily offline I think our business uh, will then shift uh, even more so in focusing on the at-home experience uh, focusing on getting uh, the retail shops uh, stocked up with our products and also uh, then uh, as I mentioned getting the uh, experience online uh, in addition to in person so i think we'll have to cater to this uh, new uh, trend and i shouldn't call it a new trend because i think naturally just millennials and all these uh, new consumers have been preparing to stay more at home anyway i think it's just going to be a little bit more accelerated and you'll be with smaller more intimate groups uh, so i think it's just prioritizing your business and uh, adjusting here uh mira if i have to ask you what would be the three big points that you would like to share uh, with marketers you know about uh, reaching out to the customer base do you briefly answer this earlier also but just want to three big points uh, during this uh, pandemic what are the three big uh, advice points um i am my first point is nothing different from what i would uh, talk about marketing if it was business as usual and not a covid lockdown It, it what you do as a brand has to be true to two things one is your brand itself and the brand dna and two is your customer and customer insight please find meaningful ways to actually be a part of your customer lives don't let it be faffy if it is faffy it will fall flat so if you have a meaningful way to actually solve for something that your uh, a problem or a need that your customer is facing that is where and that is how you actually build brand and brand love right that is that is the first one so please have that uh, clarity in your head before you start doing anything don't do things for the sake of doing things please do it when you see a perfect fit between your brand and your customers needs and concerns at this moment the second one is uh, if 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 there was a time that this is the time to actually over communicate and not uh, actually hold back your customers uh, you know you don't want to basically disappear uh, and be out of sight and out of mind despite the fact that you you might be in a business that currently is severely hampered because of the lockdown so this is a time to be there be uh, out of the open communicate uh, and and even possibly over communicate thirdly i think it is critical at this time that every brand um, definitely has some empathy uh, towards its customers um, this 
empathy uh, is something that will anyways come out through your communication but uh, without that you will uh, you, you will you will end up uh, being very superficial and really not touch the customers the way you want to uh, for building long term associations um, and yes lastly i know it's a fourth point but do not spend an overspend i know there are some comments which say that uh, you know marketing is the first target for uh, cutting down budgets at this time and being being a cmo uh, and being uh, having been in marketing for a long enough time um this is, sorry to hurt certain sentiments but that's the call that's precisely the call that i would take because uh, every buck that you spend needs to give you roi right at a time where it is not going to give you that roi uh, why burn it use lower cost options conserve cash at this moment but uh, stay relevant and then when the time comes by all means go and spend uh my advice to brand marketers is use this time to uh, really think about everything that is happening or has happened in your organization challenge the status quo anything that you've been hitting repeat on really challenge to see if it's working uh and uh use this time to understand your consumers on a much deeper level uh through engagement online through consumer insights which mira mentioned understand new ways of getting to those consumers and get all of your plans in execution mode and uh, don't overcomplicate things right now as you have this opportunity to think uh when it comes specifically to our industry you know we always say that there hasn't been a playbook handed down to us uh when it comes to beer in india unlike markets like the us or belgium where this is uh, handed down you know a generation by generation it's a very traditional industry uh so we're all creating uh the uh path as we go along uh so it gives us uh, an opportunity to really uh be able to dive deep uh so that is one two i think you know uh, as a brand marketer uh, of course your uh, first uh, job at hand is to excite consumers and to create consumer demand i think that's a textbook answer uh when it comes to what a marketer does but i think what's equally important and probably more important in today's time uh especially post covid is to make sure you excite the organization especially if you're a sales organization like like mine um because the sales teams and everyone else uh is looking towards marketing to get them energized and excited about the different programs and uh uh different uh, uh things uh in terms of maybe brands and so on uh that you are working with right and uh we have to be real because it is going to be a, a dog fight when the markets open up and the bars open up and the retail shops open up so it's incumbent upon us as marketers to make sure we keep our sales guys and uh, and gals you know uh keep their head in the game keep them excited and um uh make sure that the tools that we're giving them are uh tools that are effective tools to help them immediately and and uh we need to just cut all of the fluff right now and focus on uh getting them uh, exactly what they need Uh, and i think the third piece which i'm very passionate about is uh, getting out i think as brand marketers and anyone in the head office uh, at some point or at multiple times throughout the year you've said you know what i need to get out in the field more often and uh, i need to learn the market a little better i need to see my brands and so on i think now is the time where you have to get out in the field roll up your sleeves get in the trenches with your sales teams and uh, uh show them the support uh standing shoulder to shoulder to shoulder with them as a matter of your ceo cmo uh supply chain hr admin everyone needs to get out there uh and support the team and also uh you know we don't have the luxury right now to wait for information we need to make real time decisions uh when we're out there so the teams need us they need us to keep them energized and keep their heads in the game uh and also just have fun i think that uh goes without saying um uh, make sure that you're having fun and you're keeping a positive energy because as leaders it's uh, again important for us to be able to deliver that energy to uh, the entire organization I think the brilliant point uh, that Deepak made the second one is there are two customers at this time to hell uh, one is the external customers that you have who buy your products and services the second and equally important customers that you have to really take care of and ensure that they are equally motivated and engaged are your own employees right and every company i think is uh, having a tough time uh, not being able to see people and you know uh, it's not business as usual and that 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 equally is a, a marketing opportunity and that is uh, actually the marketing team's job in my opinion to at this time uh, you know effectively market to your own internal employee uh, organization and keep them completely motivated and inspired 
I have two more questions and then we have a lot of questions from the viewers. We are live on Facebook and for our Twitter, uh, those who are on Twitter, they can find us on the hashtag uh, E4M webinar. They can keep live with us. They can feed the questions also. So I have this question that we have seen over some of the brands uh, that try to sell during this. So what will happen to brands that use this situation to sell? I mean, I mean, what is your, how do you see that uh, people say that it's not the right thing to do and how do you see, what do you have to tell those brands that try to make most see that, that this as an opportunity to kind of grow and what do you have to tell them? Um, I don't think, I, you know, public memory is short, but not that short. So um, thankfully I haven't seen any brand, uh, particular brand per se trying to make a quick buck over here. Uh, in fact, I've seen most people behave very maturely uh, uh, during this time. Um, uh, but but it, 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 would, it would really uh, reflect on you, your organization and your uh, brand uh, as someone who doesn't quite care about customers and is only behind profits. Um, I don't think that that would be a right behavior at all. Um, and uh, God forbid that someone takes this kind of stupid decision they'll only uh, live to regret it much later. Right, right, right. Even your thoughts? I would agree. I think consumers, uh, if you're using this time to uh, turn a quick buck and take advantage of the situation, then you're grossly underestimating today's consumer. Uh, there's just way too much uh, information out there and uh, they might, depending on what you're selling, uh, purchase whatever you're selling today, depending on if it's a commodity or not, but they will not forget that. So I don't think we should underestimate uh, the consumer. And, uh, and if you are to make a quick buck, then uh, uh, make as much as money as you can today. And, and it, is, it is an age where I don't think there is any information asymmetry anymore, right? Uh, you right. live in a democratized information world. And uh, therefore, uh, this is something that's going to keep coming back to haunt you if you're ever, you know, if you dare to do something like this. So now that the lockdown has been extended till the 3rd of May, and uh, what is the road to recovery like, Vera, if I have to start with you? Well, how do you see the road to recovery? Of course, uh, I mean, it's going to take uh, some time, but how, do you, how would it pan out as we move along? I think, I think that, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, sorry, no, you go first. Sorry, I thought you said that. I think you should, yeah. No, no, Deepak, uh, this time you take it first. <clears throat> okay, oh. Deepak, you can start first. I'm sure we'll have two different answers here, or maybe similar answers. But no, guys, please, sorry. All right, so uh, my, my personal opinion is that uh, the road to recovery is going to be a little tough. Uh, see, uh, this, is, this is not a financial crisis, it's a health crisis, right? And uh, given that it's a health crisis for which we still don't have any cure or vaccine, uh, it is not likely to go away soon. Uh, a lot of things are going to be restricted even post, uh, you know, lockdown is slowly eased away. And uh, what will happen also, uh, you know, macroeconomics is obviously going to take a, uh, you know, take over and we will see signs of recession um, coming in immediately after this. Um, therefore, I don't see recovery being a uh, very smooth road. It's in fact going to be super rocky. And uh, it is at this time that, uh, and that's why I again stress that conserving cash at this time uh, and not overspending uh, will actually help brands to be able to advertise at the time where they are able to uh, properly uh, assure supplies to customers and, uh, you know, they are able to actually take uh, advantage of whatever spends that they're going to do. So my sense is that uh, the ad, the addicts industry is going to be a little muted even in the coming quarters. It is going to be very difficult for a lot of people to bounce back and bounce back quickly because cash flows will be constrained. Uh, people will have problems over there and uh, I do see an overall dip continuing for at least a quarter more in terms of overall uh, ad expenditure. Uh, your thoughts, Sadiqa? Yeah, so I, I agree. I think the road to recovery is, is going to be uh, very challenging, especially uh, in certain industries like the alcohol industry. Um, and. Uh, uh, I think the, the best way we can prepare for those challenges is uh, uh, what we're doing, and I'm sure many other companies are doing right now, is just preparing for all of these different scenarios. We have a great team over at Beer, and I call them the data warriors, uh, and they've been working at uh, figuring out all of these different scenarios. What is the best of the worst case scenario, worst of the worst case scenario, 
uh, and uh, and then making sure that you know all the departments then align to these uh, different uh, uh, scenarios. So I think um, being prepared uh, uh, for the worst uh, and hoping for the best, I think, uh, is a um, a saying that is very much relevant right now for all of us because there are so many variables that we're still having to deal with. Again, as you mentioned, the lockdown being extended today, who knows what's going to happen uh, in terms of uh, businesses opening up and who gets prioritized or not. So I think um, uh, as brand marketers, uh, the road to recovery will be tough and we need to align as closely as to sales more than ever uh, than before. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, make sure that we're a good partner to them and give them clear focus on uh, putting the right brands in the right places. What are those configurations? How do we get the back end aligned to those configurations? And uh, and then making sure that um, uh, we keep the morale of the team up. Uh, and uh, when business resumes and those bands are lifted, that we get out there and uh, support them in any which way we can. So uh, I think it's a uh, tough task ahead of us. But uh, I am also very impressed with all of the camaraderie and the unity uh, has, uh, which has come together, not just within our organization, but I think uh, for humanity uh, overall. Uh, and you see that through, I'm sure, all of your WhatsApp group chats. Everyone's like rolling up their sleeve, willing to pitch in and help out wherever they can. So I think this experience has taught us to be more human and uh, I think that will translate into the workspace as well. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll do it together. So we have a lot of questions coming from viewers and I have some of them with me, so I'll ask, we can answer them one by one, Deepak and Lula, we can answer them one by one. Let me pick up one question is by uh, Rajiv Dash. His question is that, how are you going to plan the social media at this point of time? Is social media going to be very critical in terms of digital plan going forward? Mira, you can start and then. So, uh if, if you look at the stats, um, the percentage of time being spent on social media has gone up. Uh, so yes, you have, if you want to engage customers, that is one place to actually engage them. Um, it's always, so you, you just follow your customers. So if your customers are there on social media in large numbers, and uh, if, if you have something that can really engage and interest them at this time, um, by all means, please do it. Uh, don't, don't, uh, I, I will not, give you specific uh, splits in terms of how much budget to park here and there, etc. But it is really about, uh, you know, what, what, what's the objective that you're going with? Me, for example, uh, contrary to um, what, contrary to the data, I'm actually spending less on social media today because there is so much of uh, organic latent demand and so much of customer base itself that are coming to the platform. I'm using more CRM and CRM platforms and marketing automation rather than social media. But uh, social media is a great place to be if you as a brand uh, just want to remain top of mind and build consideration at this time for your future demand. Deepak, your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, with social media, uh, you can't pl uh, plan too far out right now. And uh, you have to plan on a week by week basis. And uh, it's also uh, you know, has to strike a balance between what are your objectives and uh, uh, and, and managing the sensitivity of the audience right now. So um, I think for us, what we have uh, have done is we are keeping uh, uh, a check on, on the tone that we use. We're posting uh, uh, events like we're doing throwback posts where, um, you know, we're reminding consumers of the good times and keeping them optimistic that normal will or uh, life will resume again, you know, when it comes to not just our brands, but being out and about and being social. So I think right. when it comes to planning, you have to do it on a week by week basis, like many other things in any organization right now. And I would agree with Mira, um, uh, you know, not to overinvest uh, right now in, in social media, just uh, don't try to fit into uh, conversations that as a brand, you just don't genuinely fit into. Uh, again, consumers are very smart uh, and they'll right. see um, you may be taking advantage of a situation and, uh, and, and just trying too hard. Uh, so keep it real, keep a very honest tone and, uh, uh, and, uh, and do whatever uh, you can in terms of uh, planning on a week by week basis. Yeah. There's a question for you, Deepak. Uh, this is from Amit Dalla. He says, uh, post COVID, uh, will Vira look, how will Vira look at packaging and distribution innovation? Uh, I mean, 
is there a barrier in supply? Would there be any kind of barrier in supply chain post COVID? How could you address those issues? So is there a barrier in supply chain? Yeah, there's one really big barrier. I won't mention who the barrier is right now. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> the uh, the barrier, of course, are all the bans right now. Uh, but <clears throat> I think uh, in terms of when, let's say, thing, business resumes and uh, uh, the outlets start to open up again and our breweries are allowed to function again, the barrier is going to be the um, just complexity of supply chain logistics in India. And uh, I think what's important for us to deal with that challenge is making sure that the front end, when it comes to our sales teams, have very specific uh, targets and focuses. So again, having the right brands in the right place, not trying to sell, sell all of our eight brands everywhere. Uh, and once we have that clarity, then the supply chain will also have a lot of efficiency. So uh, I think in order for us to overcome that barrier, simplify everything, make sure you prioritize which brands need to go where and get the inventory in uh, stock as soon as possible. Uh, all of our customers. <clears throat> so our viewers can tweet uh, hashtag Ignorant webinar. Next question is for both of you, which is from uh, Partha Sati Natarajan. He is asking, uh, what? How do you keep your internal customers, employees, and dealers engaged in in this crisis? And uh, some examples, both of you. Yeah. Very, very, you know, a good question for which I actually want to uh, talk to people. So we, we were also completely struggling with this initially because our focus was entirely on ensuring operations resumes. Um, pretty much everybody in the organization was geared towards that. But uh, here are some things that I think will help. One, I think you have a lot of apps these days, uh, including WhatsApp itself as groups. Um, and, you know, if, if your organization has something like uh, team, uh, Microsoft team, or it has stack, then it obviously makes it easier for people to interact uh, across, um, uh, not, not just within teams, but even across teams. Um, what I am doing personally uh, is, um, and, and this is the fun aspect of it, uh, every evening, 5.30 to 6, in fact, after this call, um, we have something called coffee chat. And uh, this is a mandatory half hour that everybody joins in over Zoom or Hangout. And the one thing that you're forbidden to talk about is work. So half an hour of banter, half an hour of um, absolutely, you know, chilling off and trying to make up for some of the time pass that you will normally do in office um, uh, on a normal day uh, when you're working rather than, you know, conversations and meetings just being uh, to the point. So uh, we, we do this uh, within departments very effectively and it is indeed uh, so refreshing. People are coming out with so much of uh, creativity, so much innovation. Um, you know, they are playing quizzes, they are quizzing each other. There is DJ. People have, uh, you know, come up with DJ mixes and records that they play. And, you know, you have others generally shaking their head and grooving to it. Mm -hmm. And you have, uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, Antakshari and group. Uh, groups being made over there. Uh, people are sharing the kind of things that they're doing. They are challenging each other to stuff. Uh, people who are avid gamers are saying, Ki, oh, you are on this game, Chalo, let's play. And you know, there are, there are two sides egging them on. So, so half an hour in a day uh, to organize it as a formal calendar invite that people can basically use to come and just do anything and everything other than work is something that we are doing at Medlife uh, and it is it has so far been very effective. Uh, people are loving it. They actually look forward to it. Uh, secondly, I think it is equally important to engage people on the ground, right? Uh, as much as you have corporate employees on the ground also, those are the people who are uh, really my health warriors. And for them, um, what we are doing is one, we are one calling them out and recognizing them. Um, you know, it is it is amazing that when so many people are scared and shut, there are still so many of them uh, in midlife who are still, you know, braving it out there, going there, some walking as much as six and 10 kilometers by foot because public transport is not there. So to recognize these people, to call them out, to, you know, we even have a personal call by one of us in the leadership team uh, is something that we are doing to encourage them and really, uh, you know, make them feel good. We have also, uh, you know, we are also ensuring that we make sure that customers that they have delivered to and when they are giving them a word of appreciation, we are actually sending it out to them and telling them that what they are doing is so important, not just for MedLife, but also for India. And, you know, thereby keeping that constant stream of engagement uh, going for even the ground people. Um, 
uh, uh, Anand, uh, our CEO, has been very proactive. He is uh, literally releasing uh, one, uh, you know, one minute, one and a half minute kind of videos of him talking to different departments uh, every other day, and uh, that's his way of ensuring that he's able to actually be there. Uh, at least in video and spirit, if not in person, with all these people at this time. So I think there are tons of things that you can do, and uh, you know it, it is really about uh, giving employees. And it is it is it is not a very great period. I am telling you personally, I am bored. But equally, it is also a little frustrating. Um, so you have to help your people uh, come out of that. You have to create positivity. And therefore, our evening banter groups are a great way that we we are able to do that, and we are maintaining it. Uh, similarly, a whole lot of other initiatives which uh, really inspires and motivates us. Uh, we are we are at it, uh, you know, every day, uh, and and it is it is working so far. Deepak, how are you keeping your internal stakeholders uh, engaged? Yeah. So, Mir had a, a lot of great examples that I am going to now implement. Uh, I, I like <laughs> a lot of the ideas that you've shared, and um, uh, on our side, we've also have, you know, we we have a learning and development portal uh, that our HR team has put together with many different sessions and uh, uh, everything from, you know, learning more about beer, learning more about our business, uh, different modules and so on. So we've really ramped up the uh, seminars and content uh, on the L&D portal. So all of uh, the organization has access to that. As I mentioned, Thomas has held a couple of uh, sessions uh, internally and also for our consumers. So I think we're just overall using this time to keep everyone engaged in many different ways that touches our business uh, and uh, and making sure that every individual has a uh, sense of uh, purpose, a sense of belonging, uh, even if all of the outlets are shut and you're getting bored at home and so on, at least you have some way of uh, continuously improving yourself. Uh, so that becomes a, a very good platform for us is this uh, learning and development tool. We call it the B School. Uh, so that's one. And then also, you know, with, comes to our uh, retailers and uh, the different bars and restaurants and so on. So our sales teams have been staying in touch with them, giving them uh, updates and uh, also just, again, keeping an open dialogue. You know, I think uh, maybe too often you get caught up in like not knowing what to say and and, uh, uh, and uh, maybe we'll shy away from communicating overall, but just keep an open dialogue. I think it's an, an unprecedented time for, for all of us and uh, uh, just staying in touch is, is very important. Uh, that should be the baseline of all of your relationships right now and then figure it out from there. Uh, so those are a couple of ways that we are uh, keeping all of our stakeholders uh, uh, you know, engaged. There's a question for you, Deepak. This is from Shiba Bhutani. And her question is that, as you mentioned, that experiences will move to living rooms and trusted circles. Yeah. Given alcohol, liquor plays a huge role in socializing and recreation. Do we see this category seeing an upswing post COVID? The category of entertaining at home. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think absolutely we're going to going to see uh, an upswing uh, upswing of uh, people spending more time at home uh, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, where uh, yeah, a lot of people are still going to be reluctant to be in large. Uh, uh, places, you know, so maybe if you were walking into a bar a couple of months ago and it was busy and, and uh, you were looking to socialize, it would be a great, you know, scene to see a very busy bar. Like, look at all these people and, you know, I'll get to meet new people, talk to uh, different people. And maybe now the sentiment's a little different and this bar is a little crowded for me. And maybe I don't want to be around so many people or uh, attend a festival and concert. So uh, I think we will see an upswing in people wanting to spend time at home. I think that also. Uh, is uh, something that's supported with the trend of the social taboos of alcohol easing up uh, across India. And, uh, you know, uh, we're seeing, um, of course, more people becoming uh, of drinking age. So all of that, I think, is leading to this big cultural shift. And this COVID quarantine situation is going to um, uh, send more people in their living rooms drinking beer uh, in more trusted environments than... Uh, uh, potentially going out as much as they used to. Uh, of course, we'll still have it, the group of uh, people that will go out and want to just get out of the house and have a beer anywhere, uh, whether it's at a uh, bar or picking up a uh, beer from a retail shop uh, and uh, uh, spending some time elsewhere. So. Right. Uh, there's another question from Julian uh, Karatin. I hope I got the name right. A question uh, to you, Mira, is will there be a 
trust deficit in brands post COVID nineteen days? Would brands. there be any kind of trust deficit uh, when bra where brands are concerned? I mean, see, trust deficit happens either when you screw up customer experience, or you basically get embroiled in some kind of uh, controversy that comes and affects you. Um, or, or you know, there is there is something seriously uh, you know called out called out in terms of your uh, overall quality, right? So uh, if 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 you are not going to falter on any of these items, I don't see why there should be a trust deficit. In fact, uh, brands that manage to pull it off in terms of being able to serve people at this time will only see increased trust in them rather than uh, decreased trust. So I don't right. think, uh, you know. Unless, unless you basically, you know, both there, na, Hindi mein ki apne pair pe kudhadi mar diya. So unless it is going to be that kind of a case, uh, I don't think uh, there is any need for trust deficit to suddenly surface up. Right. Um, for uh, you, Deepak, I have this question that uh, this will be for both of you. I start with you, Deepak. Uh, what about uh, sponsorships for outdoor events? How do you see events industry in the near future? Yeah. So. Uh, I think those, uh, those uh, uh, sponsorships are, are, sorry, there's a little bit of an echo. I think those sponsorships surely are going to be uh, affected uh, across the board, across our entire industry. And, um, uh, but what is really reassuring is how these platforms and these different organizations are moving the experiences online. So uh, I think maybe, yes, the uh, uh, immediate uh, uh, thought is that those will be, um, but I think overall everyone is adjusting and they're adjusting very quickly and uh, you, know, you see brands um, again, doing anything from like live DJ sets to full-on concerts art artists going online and just wanting to connect with their consumers in so many different uh, uh, intelligent ways uh, so uh, overall, overall uh, things, uh, will, things will yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there's really Sorry, there's bad. really bad uh, Sorry. So yeah, the overall, overall, all of the industries, all of the industries will eventually. Yeah. So my yeah. last question. This is my. This is my last question. Uh, we are almost done with time. Quick, uh, thirty-second answer. Uh, this is from. He has not mentioned his name, but uh, they want to see how do we see BTL. Uh, you know what would happen to BTL post COVID nineteen. BTL is going to um, um, I think somebody put a phone on because on because of playing back. Playing back. Right. So so okay. So, so uh, BTL is again going to take a hit. Um, digital is the one that will really reap benefits of uh, this entire post-COVID lockdown for some time. After that, I think, uh, you know, given that as, as people, we, we really resent being locked down like this uh, for such a long time. When it does open up, I think it will open up and more avenues for BTS. Deepak, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, so I think the question was, how is BTL going to be uh, affected? And uh, I think for oh. us, uh, BTL is going to be more important than ever. And uh, making sure, again, we're supporting the sales teams where they need it the most. And uh, we're cutting a lot of the uh, sort of nice to haves from our marketing, focusing on those tactical programs, getting out in the field and uh, giving them the tools that they need today uh, and not uh, maybe tomorrow. I think that uh, we'll have to get phased out to maybe later in the year once uh, we can get our distribution in place and uh, uh, correct things at the point of purchase uh, for our sales teams first. I think uh, that's for today. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, great valuable insights shared here and thanks for all the, the engagement and great questions coming from the audience viewers here. Thank you and see you soon. Thank you. Thanks.